Good morning, church. And welcome to Bethel Thedford. Beautiful day out there today, and we're just getting ready for the next onslaught. <laughs> the next freezing rain and rain and snow, maybe with the odd bit of sunshine in between. <laughs> but then when the sunshine comes, everything looks beautiful because everything sparkles with the ice. You know, so you take the good with the bad, and you learn to drive with the bad. <laughs> We're going to start off with, uh, this is the day. poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Help us to hide your word in our hearts so that we don't sin against you, Lord. You've called us, Lord, so we choose to be humble and gentle, patient with others, making allowances for their faults, as we pray they make allowances for ours. And it's all because of the love, your love, that you've given to us. We know that none of us are perfect, that all fall short of your standard. Help us to be united in the Spirit, binding ourselves together with peace. Let us come to unity and faith that is the full and complete standard of Christ, so that we'll never be swayed by false teachings or distracted by clever lies that sound like the truth. Let us speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. The objective is that each day we become more and more like Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you direct our path, be the light for our path. Lead us to you, Lord. Be the head of this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I've got a few announcements that I've written out here. If I don't write them out, I forget, and I was asking what, I've, what I had mentioned before. <laughs> we have a fellowship lunch today, and... Um, there's a great big pot of uh, chicken and dumplings down there, so you better be hungry. Uh, business meeting reports will be uh, at the back there next Sunday. And the business meeting is March the 12th. Communion is next week. So uh, be prepared next week for communion. If you're not here, then be, have your elements ready at home. As you noticed when you came in, the door wasn't installed on Tuesday as it was supposed to. I know it was windy and everything. Um, they had a uh, previous job in the morning and it took longer than they had expected. We waited here. We, anyway, pretty well all day we were here. And uh, then when I got hold of them, because the phone wasn't working either, the phone or the internet weren't working and we had to get that sorted out. But it's supposed, the door's supposed to come in this Wednesday. And uh, we pray that it does manage to get done this Wednesday and that the weather is going to be, be good. Thank you, Stephanie and uh, Zoe, for helping with the cleaning of the sidewalks, the shoveling and the salt and, and such. And <laughs> Stephanie and I were working away with the paint scrapers out there. They work good, don't they? They did, yes. Yes, they dig, dug right through that ice and so we got the uh, sidewalks all cleared. Well, got two of them cleared. We got the one so we had to go with extra salt and, and put down there because it needed to be softened up. And uh, the garbage, I forgot to come back in and uh, put it out. Had planned on doing it Thursday night. Um, the containers are right full yeah. out there. Um, yeah, I had to put the church garbage over in your garbage because yeah. somebody had filled our garbage. Yeah. Uh, so it was, 
Yeah, if you guys could be putting that out on Fridays, that I'm would be great. I try to remember to remind the boys. Yeah. Well, uh, you're getting old too. <laughs> well, I got to take Joey first thing to his co-op and then come All right. back. So if, if I don't get there fast enough and then come back, then yeah. I'm gone. But Maybe I'm put a it. sticky tab on the door. Yeah. Read this before you leave. Put the garbage out. Okay. Well, if I remember on uh, Thursday when we have music practice, to pull it out uh, near the front, mm -hmm. then at least it's more visual. Mm -hmm. So I forgot. <laughs> Although I think it was windy, wasn't it on Thursday? So it. Yeah, yeah, because we put uh, ours is um, Thursday morning, and I had to turn the one backwards so that the weight was on the one end. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would have gone over. Anyway. All right. Abide with me. Thank you. 
my faithfulness. With the random access nations, we're looking at Iraq today. Luke 2, no, Luke 10, chapter 2. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into the fields. There's always a need for more workers, especially in the um, random access nations. Have you got your little... Pointy? There we go. You can see it there on the map. Now, Iraq in 2022 was rated as 14 for the uh, most dangerous um, country. And in 2023, it's moved down to 18. Now, I... Again, I'm not sure how they uh, come up with that because it looks like things are getting a little bit more tense. The persecution level is very high. <clears throat> There's violence, 
private life, family life, community life, national life, and church life. That's where all of the uh, persecution comes in. So in every realm of life, basically. And the persecution type, the Islamic oppression, clan oppression or family, organized corruption and crime, dictatorial paranoia, Christian denominational protection, because they only want the one, uh, one denomination there that would be called Christian other than is Islam. Population of Christians. In 2023, it's listed as 164,000. In 2022, it was listed as 166,000. So the quantity has gone down. The main religion is Islam. Government is Federal Parliamentary Re Republic. The leader is Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al Sudani. Oppression. Iraqi Christians experience discrimination, harassment, and violent persecution without protection from the state. Huge numbers of Christians were driven out of their towns and villages in 2014 when so-called Islamic State, or the IS, attempted to establish an Islamic caliphate in the north, and many have yet to return home. Iraq is home to a number of traditional Orthodox and Catholic churches but all are seriously affected by intolerance, discrimination, and persecution from local leaders, government authorities, and Islamic extremist groups. In central and southern Iraq, many Christians choose not to display their faith in public to avoid harassment or discrimination at work, university, or when trying to cross checkpoints. In the Nineveh Plains region, church leaders have been kidnapped in the past, though speaking out against local militias or political leaders are particularly at risk. Believers from Muslim backgrounds experience intense pressures from their families, clan leaders, and communities, which can lead to being expelled from the family, losing the means to get married, or being forcibly divorced, and losing their inheritance and access to their children. They may be arrested and persecuted, prosecuted under blasphemy laws if they are accused of trying to convert Muslims. It's not surprising that some choose to keep their new faith a secret. The ones that are most vulnerable, Christians who convert from a Muslim background, face the most persecution. This has traditionally been more prevalent in Arab areas than in Kurdish areas, but the influence of conservative Islam is increasing throughout the country. A comment from uh, a believer. His name is Fadi. We have an ancient Christianity here. Our presence in this country is important. Now Fadi is a church leader talking about the displacement and emigration. So what's changed for this year? Although Iraq fell four places on the world watch list, the situation of the country's Christians has not improved significantly. There are fewer reports of violent incidences, such as churches being forcibly closed or attacked, but this does not mean that church services can continue undisturbed everywhere in the country. For example, in northern Iraq, church services have not been able to take place for over a year due to Turkish bombings. In the past year, dozens of Christians were physically abused and or forced to leave their homes, and many abducted Christians remain missing. One Christian was killed for faith-related reasons, and there were many reports of damage to or confiscation of the homes or the businesses of Christians. 2 Corinthians 4, 9 and 10. This is the description of Christians in the Ran nations. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Their prayer points, what they ask you to pray for. Please pray for peace and stability to come to Iraq so Christians can return home. Pray for an increase in understanding and cooperation between Christian denominations. Pray for God's protection and courage for new believers from Muslim backgrounds. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for your strength for our brothers and sisters in Iraq who are constantly treated as a shameful problem. May they always know their true worth and your great love for each of them. 
Please protect their rights and stir the government into doing more to enable a safe return for those displaced by war. We pray, Lord, that you hold back violent extremists, and we ask for permanent peace to come to Iraq at last. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now our message today is on prayer and fasting. And yes, I know, we've talked about prayer many times, but prayer is the basis of Christianity. It's the basis of our, our faith. Fasting is something that uh, not everybody does. And prayer and fasting go together. It goes together. Prayer is a spiritual communion or communication with God or an object of worship. As in supplication, which means earnestly asking for or pleading for. Prayer is thanksgiving, it's adoration or confession. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing, which means to pray all the time. Fasting, that's something else. It's giving up food or maybe something else. At one time it was just food that they used to fast. And you give it up for a period of time in order to focus your thoughts, to direct your thoughts on God. Fasting is to humble ourselves, to help us draw closer to God. While fasting, we're to read the Bible, we're to pray, and or worship. Fasting is found throughout the Old and the New Testaments. David wrote in Psalms 35, verse 13, I humbled my soul with fasting. Now the heart of fasting is the condition of your heart, or the position of your heart. While fasting was originally about food, now this has been expanded to include many other things that take our focus off the Lord. It was about food back in the beginning because people didn't have what we have now. Like we're inundated with possessions and possessions take most of our uh, focus and that's not what it's supposed to be. It, there's nothing wrong with having the possessions. I mean that brings comfort to our lives and brings happiness. But the importance is we always have to be putting God first. With food, fasting is a sacrifice. And society is so entrenched in social media, games, TV, possessions, everything like that, giving up these things for a period of time could be a sacrifice as well. To be a true fast, the time would normally be spent in the active, that you'd normally spend with social media, or eating, or playing games, you spend that time in prayer or in reading God's word. Matthew 6, verses 17 and 18 says, But when you fast, you notice it doesn't say if you fast, so we're expected to fast. When you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one will notice that you are fasting, except your father, who knows what you do in private. And your father, who sees everything, will reward you. Don't make a spectacle of yourself when you fast, because this is between you and God, and not about the world. We're not, uh, we don't care what the world thinks. We care what God thinks. Fasting demonstrates the depth of your desire when praying for something. It shows that you are serious enough about your prayer requests to pay a personal price that you sacrifice. God honors deep desire and praying and faith. Prayer and fasting go together. Remember that song years ago, Love and Marriage? Remember that? <laughs> I think it's like prayer and fasting. They go together. And as I've mentioned numerous times, the scripture that's coming up next, first and foremost, we put God first. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added on to you. When you're praying for a breakthrough, something serious, and it feels like you aren't moving forward, add fasting to prayer. Make the personal sacrifice of giving up something that is consistent in your life. Usually it'll mean food, but many times people can't fast food for health reasons, so choose something that is very important in your life to fast, to do without for a period of time. 
But always make sure that God is first. There are prayers that are required that require fasting to get the answer required. Jesus reminded us of this in Mark 9, verse 29. So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. So sometimes there are you have to fast in order to get the answer for the prayer that you're waiting for. And that's the same with we've been praying for Bethel for the last number of years. And as we continue to pray for Bethel, that I ask that you consider adding fasting to your prayers. We want and need the stronghold broken down. And to do that, we need to decide the type of fast that will work for us and take it to the Lord and follow through in the times that we set up with the Lord. If you make a, uh, a covenant with the Lord that you're going to fast for a day a week, two days a week, three days, whatever, a day every two weeks, you have to stick with it because you're making that promise to the Lord. And during that time that you would either be eating or on your computer or on your phones, that um, you spend that time in prayer and you read God's word, listen to and sing worship songs. Oh, goodness, that was an ouch, wasn't it? <laughs> Didn't think I noticed. Uh, Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 to 5. So this is Daniel talking. So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and pleading with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said, O oh Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and faithfulness for those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned, we have done wrong, and acted wickedly and rebelled, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. This was when uh, the Jewish people had been taken to Babylon and they, were, they had to stay there for a period of time. Daniel chose his, pl his plan for fasting. And he tells us that in uh, Daniel 10, verse 3. I did not eat any tasty food, nor did meat or wine enter my mouth, nor did I use any ointment at all until the entire three weeks were completed. So he had set his time for three weeks. Now he didn't eat meat, he didn't drink wine, he says he didn't eat anything tasty. What Daniel was eating was fruit and vegetables. Well, I find those quite tasty. I have no problem with those. But it wasn't what their standard was. And so um, he fasted. And his fasting was honored. And if you f read further on down to verse 23, it says, At the beginning of your pleas, the command was issued, and I have come to tell you. Do you know who that was who came to tell him? What was going on? You're right. It was the angel Gabriel. He had come. Good Don. He had come to let Daniel know God heard his prayer. God hears our prayers. And he was responding. He knew he was going to be taken care of. But God wanted to make sure that Daniel didn't get discouraged. And he told him what was going to happen. If you want to know what was going to happen, you'd have to go into Daniel. Whatever we fast, God looks at the condition of our hearts. 1 Samuel 16, the second part of verse 7. God does not see as man sees, since man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The heart is an open book to God. He sees everything there. Jesus fasted. Does anybody know how long he fasted before he started his ministry? 40 days. 40 days. Moses fasted. He was up in Mount Sinai. How many days did he fast? 40 days, 40 days, yes, same thing. And that's, that was without food and water. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> but we're told not to uh, give up the uh, hydration, so we need to hydrate all the time. When you fast, decide what you will fast and how long you will fast, and take it to the Lord, make the commitment. Listen to the Holy Spirit. If fasting food, be sure to stay hydrated. Drink your water or juice or whatever. 
Um, dedicate time for prayer and quiet time during fast. List Bible verses. Verses, your favorite verses. Verses that lift you up. List the scriptures that you read. This will guard you against the enemy's attack. And pray over yourself. Because if you're going to fast, then you know the enemy is going to start attacking. Because he does not want you to get closer to God. Follow the fast faithfully. Watch for the hand of God for answers. There will be actions. Sometimes he may change your perspective on what you're looking at. It's hard to say what's going to happen. It depends on what you're praying for. But I ask that you pray for Bethel. Remember that prayer is the most important part of a fast. Now, I do fast. And uh, currently I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I have water. That's, uh, that's what I have uh, during fasting. And then the next day, I eat regular food. And I usually, um, I still fast uh, morning and lunch. And I have uh, supper. So it's, um, that's what works for me. That doesn't work for everybody. But it works for me. And it's, um, well, it doesn't always work for Ron because he says, oh, I'm eating by myself again. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm not too far away. <laughs> and I do make his, his meals, and he, uh, he, still eats, he still eats healthy, right? Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Made him cookies yesterday, so he was happy with that. Matthew 6, verse 8 says, Your father knows what you need before you ask him. So don't worry about the words that you're praying because God knows what's on your heart. He knows what you need. Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. You'll notice when the screens are coming up that the ones that have the full verse are the, the ones that um, are coming from open song and that it puts it all there but it won't let me break a verse if I just want the last part of it then I have to put it on the slide it's a learning curve <laughs> but it, it works well there's many verses on prayer more verses than I was going to uh, list here but I have chosen a few of them first John 5 14 this is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us according to God's will, not our will. Even Jesus, when he was praying, and he said to take this cup away from me, and then he said, no, not my will, but your will be done. So it's got to be in God's will. Psalm 145, 18, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Hebrews 4, 16. Therefore, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need. Praise God. He's always there for us. He's always there for us. And all he asks is that we be faithful and we honor him. When you're ready for your prayer time, first thing you need to do is just calm yourself. Just calm yourself. Focus on God. Invite the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to come near. Be honest with God. If you're feeling rotten, tell him, I feel crappy today. I don't know what to pray today. The Holy Spirit will give you the words that you need. Share your heart with him. And your head, what you're thinking. Because your heart and your head don't always match. Remember Paul had said, I know what I need to do, I just... Don't do it. He's no different than the rest of us. And look at the impact he had on the world. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide your words. Be still and know that God is God. He is El Shaddai. He is the creator of all things. And listen for that still small voice. Know that God has heard your prayers. Now, there's no formula for when to fast and pray, but we are called to pray continually, pray without ceasing. 
If God is calling you to fast and pray, know that something is ready to happen. Something is there at the doorstep. Just needs to get in. Even if you don't see the results right away, the Lord counts it as a sacrifice, a special offering to him. And you will get a response. You will get an answer. <clears throat> We've got a few more songs to sing. That's our message. And then we'll, after we uh, finish, we have lunch downstairs. And it's chicken and dumplings. Yes. Or dough boys, as Ron likes to call them. Cake was just delivered. Oh, cake. Yes. Ooh, nice. Yes. Okay. We have dessert, too. Because Ron ate all the cookies. <laughs> oh, I wasn't supposed to tell that, was I? <laughs> he likes cookies. Okay, I love to tell a story. buzzing. Okay, are you ready? Let's start again. Yeah. <laughs>
to get through that one or not? Isn't it funny how I can do it well when I'm just practicing? I'm not sure why that works. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is the day that you have made, and we do rejoice in it. We invite you to be part of this day and every day. We want you with us at all times. We want you living through us, using us, Lord. Let us be your instruments. We want you to direct our steps in this day, direct our thoughts and our talk. Help us, Lord, to pray more, to pray according to your will. Help us, Lord, to boost our prayer life by fasting and to use the time to pray specifically for Bethel, to be open for more people, for all peoples of all walks of life to come in those in need and those who are mature believers. We ask, Lord, that you open the doors, let your spirit draw them in. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you've already completed in this place and the promise of what is to come. Prepare us, Lord, for what is about to happen. We put our trust and our faith in you, Lord. Lord, you're our provider, you're our healer, you're our peace. You, Lord, are our all in all. And we give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God be with you. Meet again. And remember, we have the fellowship lunch downstairs following.